Forged in Fire is a TV show where professional bladesmiths will battle. They make weapons on the show and put said weapons through many tests to see what they're really made of. Whoever ends up on top gets a prize of $10,000. In the show's many seasons, we've seen some insane weapons. Welcome to Film Trip. In this video, we're going over 9 contestant weapons that amazed everyone and forged in fire. Before we begin, remember to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and wait to find out what number 1 is. Number 9. The Qatar. This blade was forged all the way back in Season 1. It was forged by David Goldberg, who was a full-time bladesmith with 20 years of experience at the time. He had used his extensive knowledge on Japanese philosophy to win the competition and forge his blade. He believes in the Japanese Ichiban, which means the very best and first quality. In the challenge, he used his ability to focus on his tasks at hand and make his blade the very best that it could possibly be. One of the judges said that the blade exemplified the practice of putting forth the best effort to result in the highest achievement possible. Wow, that is sure one heck of a compliment. His blade was able to successfully pass in every test in the challenge, so I think it's safe to say that it was an amazingly executed and efficient blade. Turning my wrist around. Good balance, though. Thank you. Both of our blades performed really well. It's anybody's game until the fat lady sings. Number 8. Hanzo Katanas This clip was of the two finalists left in the competition. They were both tasked with making a Hanzo Katana, a weapon that has only one mission, to kill. In the clip, they show both contestants' weapons against their respective dummies. Overall, both weapons held up amazingly well, and both were dubbed as able to kill. This kill test was extremely crazy, as both weapons completely destroyed their dummies. Number 7. Backswords This test was of the final two competitors' backswords. Both weapons ended up doing well, and they were both able to cut the heads right off of their dummies. Not only that, but they were sharp enough to pierce all the way through the dummies and deliver a large amount of damage to them. It's always entertaining watching well-made weapons during the kill test, especially when it ends with the dummies getting their heads chopped off. <laughs> All right, Billy. First up, I really like the way the Damascus pattern shows in your sword. Now, your handle, it's comfortable. Number six, the Chakram. This was a throwing weapon that originated in India. For this specific competition, both competitors were using slightly different methods to make their chakrams. Chris, who ended up being the winner, didn't have a jig, so he used an alternative method to making his chakram. He used a combination of rounding the weapon on the horn of his anvil and using the bevel to round it further. In the test, Chris's chakram was able to cut through two whole pieces of sugarcane, and his weapon ended up on top. Overall, his weapon was really well made and was definitely one that could kill. I don't have a jig, so I've been doing a combination of rounding it on the horn of the anvil and using the bevel to help round it further. A particular piece for a jig. I find an old oxygen tank. And so what we have now is our chakram form. I don't have a jig, so... Number 5. The Tabar. This was a battle axe that originated in Persia, India, and Armenia. It's a weapon that is made entirely out of steel, meaning it could pose some challenges when constructing it. In this episode, Ted Thompson was the winner. He wanted his tabar to be so destructive that it could chop a car in half. Because of that, he made his axe head out of an 8-pound sledgehammer head. His weapon ended out on top, and he won the competition. It's easy to see why his weapon was on the list. I mean, just look at it. That is definitely a weapon that was made to kill. You put a really good crease in the shield, and the shaft of the axe looks perfectly straight. But it's going to be fun. I decided to make an axe head out of an 8-pound sledgehammer head. I want to be able to chop a car. Number 4. The Crusader Sword This weapon was featured on the Final Combat all the way back in Season 1. The Crusader Sword was the one that was used in the Middle Ages. It's intended solely for use on a horseback. It's a very long blade, usually 28 to 31 inches. The competition consisted of Peter Swartzbird and David Roeder. 
Both men's blades were sharp for thrusting and cutting. Despite the fact that both blades were well made, Peters came out on top because of its superior performance and artistic construction. Overall, this blade was extremely beautiful and it takes much effort to craft properly. You can see it points like a spear. Beautiful thrusting capability. It's a killer. I had a lot of anxiety, but... Number 3. The Viking Battle Axe This weapon was a battle axe that originated in Scandinavia. It is a giant axe that is made for mostly close combat. In this episode, Ryu ended up winning. He didn't even have all the necessary tools that he really needed to make the axe properly as he was just foraging from his own backyard, but he still had enough to make it deadly. His giant axe ended up not only passing all the tests, but splitting the shield right in half. Overall, it's crazy what Ryu accomplished with what he had, and the axe itself is very clearly a well-crafted and deadly weapon. They used a lot of multi-layered steel. Overall, this will be one sturdy axe. And even though I don't have the proper tools to produce a Viking axe, I'm gonna come back with a- Number two, Frankish throwing axes. This test was of the final two competitors. They both had made Frankish throwing axes. Both competitors' weapons were solid, making this a memorable and entertaining kill test. Both weapons were able to deliver deep cuts upon every blow, and both weapons were able to completely crush the skulls of their dummies, resulting in gushes of fake blood going everywhere. Overall, this kill test was absolutely crazy and entertaining, as these weapons were so deadly and well made. All right, Justin, every chop and slash is deep. Overall, sir, it'll kill. Thank you. Number one, the Hunga Munga. This weapon was a cross between an ax and a knife, and it originated in Central Africa. Between its sharp edges and large hook, the weapon was insane. Not only did it cut the dummy, but the hook actually gutted it as well on the way out. In the competition, Jared Williams ended up winning because of its sharpness and consistency. This weapon was definitely one that was intended to and able to kill. Blade will definitely do damage. Your crescent edge tip, hook, and gutted whatever was in. That was our list of nine contestant weapons that amazed everyone on Forged in Fire. What did you think of the list? Which weapons did you think were the coolest? Let us know in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching Film Trip.